Um, so I'm going to try and follow that excellent talk up with something from where I work at Rare. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, creativity. And uh, I think there's a lot of indies and a lot of develop other developers here from small studios. Uh, and they're a great inspiration for big studios like us um, to really think about games and how we create and think about games in a different, different way. Nope. Okay, so first of all, I'll start off with who I am. So my name is Louise, as I was introduced, um, and I am currently the incubation director at Rare. Um, but that's not where I started. I, the first job I ever had outside of college was at Rare, and I studied classical animation in Dublin. Uh, interestingly, I was also nominated for a breakthrough BAFTA last year and got it rescinded because there's like a slight technicality about me not being English. So, you know, give it to the Irish. You're just you know, holding me back, you know. Um, but um, I travelled over from Dublin uh, with my family when I was 19 and became the youngest person at Rare Limited at the time. It started off as a a 3D animator having no computer experience at all. All of my work, all of my training is classical, which echoes what Ollie was saying, understanding art. And I do think it's really important to understand the fundamentals and the basic principles of, of art, especially when you think about things creatively. So I've been there for 15 years and I've worked this. Does anybody know Rare? Do you know the games we make? You recognize some of these games. These are some of the games that we've worked. Who here played uh, Conquer? Okay, that's my game. Good. Um, so the first, sorry, I worked on both of them. The first game I worked on was Conquer Spot for a day. I joined the company, and it was uh, about a year left, and I was an animator in Conquer Spot for a day. And I'm also the voice of Barry. Hi, you reach like Barry's place? That's me. <laughs> um, that's because there's like no girls, and at the time, like so, when we made games back in '99, we had like a team of 14 people making games. And uh, so we basically did everything. So our studio is purpose built on this, like, like uh, we, we used to have a very secretive studio. It's less secretive now. We can actually go into all the buildings now in the studio. But on site, like, we have everything. We have Starbucks. We have, like, our canteen where they feed us. We have, like, this cool sound studio. We do all of our recordings. So we do, we, we could make everything. We could lock ourselves away for a year or two years, or in some cases five years, and make a game. Um, and that's why I ended up kind of animating and doing some voices as well. So, what I'm going to talk about a little bit is not animation. So, the last thing I did was I was art director on KSR. So, I went from animator, lead animator, head of animation, art director, and now incubation director. It's like they don't know what to do with me. But it's awesome because I feel like I'm quite a creative person. Um, and I basically look after a team of eight people now. And we are, we're a new team within Rare. We've always kind of incubated ideas. The idea is of incubation is that, so currently, and I'd love to tell you all about it, we're in development of our next big project, which you'll hear about next year. And I promise you, you're going to get excited. I'm very excited about this idea. What we do in incubation is while we have our, I oh know, <laughs> teasing, but it is awesome. Anyway, um, what we do while they're developing the next, this big game that they're going to talk about next year, um, we kind of whittle away in the background and we start developing what we think is going to be the next project. So we work on project two um, or three, depending on some of the other things we're doing. Um, so what's cool about that is we basically, we basically work as a very small team and we jam on ideas all day, every day. It's like the best job in the world. It's awesome. Um, so what I'm going to show you is the first thing that we do is we set up a room for ideas. So my first job when I was incubation director was to kind of go, oh, we need a space where we want everybody to work. And this is the, we call it Creative Central. It's kind of hoity-toity. Um, and this is where my team sit. That's my desk over there by the window. Um, and this was actually a picture I took yesterday while the team were, were, were jamming on some ideas. Um, the best thing about the, a space like this, a creative space that you want to have for kind of generating ideas, is you want to have something open plan so that you can talk to each other. My team is made up of multiple disciplines, so I've got designers, uh, artists, 2D artists, 3D artists, engineers, animators. Um, we also have the creative director in there. He's a bit insane, so he sits up. I put him in the corner to keep him out of trouble. Um, 
and what, we also, what you also need as well is an, open, an open, open space where you can kind of talk to each other. It's lots of white walls because we like to, like, we go, we brain fart on the walls all the time. Um, and we put pictures up and we put inspiration up. So the whole, all the walls around our office are white walls that you can write on. We also have a Lego wall where, you know, have you seen the Lego walls? You could, yeah. There, you build Lego out of the wall and it's just for us to have fun because we're silly. You also have loads of these things. Like it looks like it's, you know, child's schoolroom. But this is great for rapid prototyping. You don't need to, you like, if you've got an idea, like Hearthstone, right? Has everybody here played Hearthstone? Yeah, yeah you could have prototyped that on paper beforehand, right? And proven out your idea quite quickly. And it takes like a couple of hours to build something as a paper prototype. And I'll show you some examples of that later on. So keep stuff like this just to allow people to be creative and kind of whip up quick paper prototypes. Uh, and we have cards. We play a lot of board games in our... And tools. Again, we usually wear... Over the past 15 years, we're like when I started a conquer, like uh, banjo was being made at the same time, and Perfect Dark was being made, and all of these games had different. And Grab by the Ghoulies, which was after banjo, and um, all had different engines. And none of us, because we weren't allowed like talk to each other, all of those um, engines weren't shared. So we were kind of building animation engines and you know rendering engines and tools for those specific engines rather than <coughs> sharing everything. So um, we kind of united our engines for when we did the first Connect Sports, or Connect Sports 2 actually, and uh, we made Rocket Engine. And then we kind of, this year, we decided, like, particularly with incubation, we don't want to depend on an engine that we have to kind of manage ourselves and have a team of people to look after. Actually, there's, the, the software is out there. The tools are out there for us to use. So we use both Unity and Unreal. We've actually kicked off some jam stuff that we're doing this week, um, and we're using Unity. I also use Maya. I started using Maya, and then I learned 3D Max, and then I went back to Maya as an animator. But, um, and then uh, uh, Creative Cloud. So for, if you just... We just want all your Adobe tools, just get Creative Cloud, because it just keeps it updated. You get all the latest versions of it, and it's kind of awesome. And that way you get, like, you know, Photoshop, but you also get um, Premiere and After Effects, which are great tools as well for pitching videos. So a big part of what we do as designers or, or, or creatives or people coming up with ideas is, is thinking about how we pitch our game ideas. And I have a real... Even though I've done a PowerPoint presentation, I am sick of people pitching me game ideas in PowerPoint. I want to see a video, I want to see a paper prototype, I want to play it, I want to see something inspiring and creative. And I try and encourage as many people as possible out there when they're talking about their games to get up and do it in a different way. Like, make a card game and make people play it, and that's a great way to pitch your idea. <clears throat> so, a little bit about our process. Um, what we do is, we, it's not just the team of people on incubation that come up with ideas. We have, like, we open it up to the whole studio, and in fact, anybody in Microsoft, because we're part of the Microsoft organization, can fill in one of these Inspire cards. So, you know, when Phil Spencer visits you, I hand him one of these and go, right, if you've got an idea for us, then, then fill it out. And I'm pretty sure I know what he'd say. But uh, uh, what we do is, you just, it's like we've got a section of our whiteboard dedicated to these cards, and we can get, like, 100, 150 ideas on the wall. Um, and you just write in, like, what's the idea? I really love Banjo-Kazooie. Why is it interesting? Because it's Banjo-Kazooie, right? And then from the brain of Greg Mails, who's the original designer, and the date that it goes on the wall. The reason we put the person on there as well as the date is so that we can talk to the person with the idea and pick their brain apart and why they like the idea and kind of involve them in the process, whether they're on the team or not. The date that we put on there is because we prioritize everything. So we work with our studio uh, lead, which is Craig, um, to kind of prioritize what we think um, we want to make, what the studio needs, and what, might, what the console needs are as well, so where we see a gap in the market. Um, once we kind of like an idea, we take it through. So we've got like our, our pillars in incubation are inspire, nurture, make. So inspire is the first bit where you've got that kind of, you know, moment, that light bulb moment. The second stage is when we, we want to nurture that idea and turn it into, into something real. So at this stage, we start paper prototyping or we do um, mini prototypes in Unity or we do presentations, we do a lot of research. So this is the exploration phase. So we could spend a couple of sprints. Our sprints are like two weeks. And I call them sprints because that's what most people in our studio call them, but it's just like two weeks worth of work and we throw it all in and then we kind of look at it and go, oh, let's change it or I don't like this or I want to do this. And we just keep reviewing it, keep reviewing it. And this could go on for 
two weeks or it could go on for three months or it could go on for a year. Uh, and basically at this stage we go from having 100 ideas down to three ideas, which ultimately we want to end up with one idea. And that's where we go into the make phase. And the make phase is where we start talking about the next stage. And this is where we start pitching it to Microsoft and leadership, so where we start sharing it with, with Phil Spencer, Phil Harrison, who's, who's uh, head of EMEA Studios. And um, we build a proper prototype. Everything that we do at this stage will eventually be ditched if the game idea gets moved through to proper uh, pre-production. Um, because they may want to use Unreal. They may take elements of what we've built. But ultimately, for us, the biggest thing with incubation is you've got to like try, 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 fail, 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 pick up the pieces, try again. Fail. You've got to learn from your mistakes. So, you know, we'll do, we could prototype 10 things. Nine of them just don't work out. Um, but one of them could be the champion idea, and that's, that's the point of incubation, is to try lots and lots of different things, see what works, and ultimately find the fun. The key of incubation is finding it, because we don't want to make shit games, basically. And try hard not to. Oh, that didn't work. Well, basically, it's a one sheet. It was uh, supposed to be animated, so you could see the blank one sheet beforehand. So what we do is when we get to a certain stage where we think we have an idea, so we'll start with like a rough, like, I want to make, you know, um, a sports game. And, uh, and then we go to uh, fleshing out what the idea is. So we do a one sheet. And so the one sheet will have like your title. And you put some images on here. So at a glance, you kind of get an idea of what it is. So this is not a game we're making. This is an archived game. But this is an idea that was sent through for somebody in the team. And then you put like your, your kind of one line tagline explanation of what it is. Why should adults have all the fun? This is a high quality, exciting, swashbuckling action adventure that kids can play to. Um, and then over here, you talk about like, some of the mechanics. So you talk about what the player will be doing, what they will be feeling, um, who, they will, who will they be playing against. This is the twist. So what makes this game unique and different and innovative? Because we're always looking for innovative things that rare. And then who's the audience? Do we make it for Xbox One? Do we make it for PC? Do we make it for, you know, a tablet, um, is it for moms, dads, you guys, kids, who knows? And that's, that's basically where we get to with an idea. Ooh. One of the other things that we do, and this is a great tip for, for groups of people working together, even if you're working on your own, you should like try and do this, um, brainstorming. Um, so we have like a list of rules. These are our rules that we put on the wall for brainstorming, which sounds like shit that you don't want to have rules when you brainstorm. So brainstorming is just when a group of people get together and you have to have a very solid idea of what you're, you're brainstorming. So we try and f ask a question. So again, uh, mimicking what Ali said, it's all about asking the right question. So you have to ask a lot of questions to find the right question. So it could be, um, let me think, try to think of something that doesn't give away anything that we're doing. Um, so it could be uh, like what is, we, we did some brainstorming recently on some, some platforming games, so it's like what is, you know, a really cool, key, interesting mechanic for a platforming game. And so we'd all get together and we'd have like a whiteboard with a question on it and we'd all have post notes and sharpie pens. And when you go into the room, you basically go in, there's no, like we'll have people from all walks of life in there, everybody's the same. So if the studio head's in there with like a brand new graduate, they have equal say. They have equal waste in everything that we do. Wild ideas are encouraged. So we want to hear really crazy, zany ideas. They're usually the best. And then they kind of allow us to build on those ideas as well. So when you get like crazy out there ideas, you kind of got to build and combine, build and combine until you come up with the idea. Um, What's great about brainstorming sessions is you get a lot of ideas. So a really great thing is fast creative thinking. It's trying to just whip out loads and loads and loads and loads of ideas um, really quickly. Uh, every person, every idea has equal worth. And one idea at a time. I had to put that in there because we have a very loud bunch of people and they kept talking over each other. And I'm like, okay, one idea at a time. Um, which is good because I want to encourage... Because when you've got different personalities, you've got some people who are much more extroverted than, than some other people. And we want to make sure that everybody has, has an opportunity to say that piece and be heard and listened to as well because everybody's idea has worth. There's no such thing as a bad idea. There are some negatives. Not everybody loves brainstorming and they can go really badly. You can have like a really, really bad brainstorming session if you don't have a well thought out plan or question to ask beforehand and you'll just end up with loads of random ideas that don't mean anything. So you really have to get that. But it, it just takes practice to kind of get brainstorming right. Some tips on how to stay creative. So 
make notes, like keep a pen and paper with you all the time. I'm pretty sure, I'm sure everybody does that, right? Yeah, no, maybe. Um, but I would suggest that you do, right? Keep a pen and paper with you all the time. Play games. Like, this is like when I go to schools and I talk about, you know, things I think you should do. I'm like, yeah, play games. Watch cartoons, watch films, you know, read books. Do all the stuff that you're, you're kind of told not to do because they're actually the things that inspire us. Uh, and, like, there's so many great, um, smart, and, like, and I'm not even a huge console game player. I play indie games. I play mobile games a lot. I'm currently working my way through Thomas is Alone, which is, like, a great example of a very simple game mechanic, but actually it's the story and the way they tell the story that really I find uh, appealing. And that's just my own personal preference. Um, uh, I read a lot. So I actually don't know how I have time to do a lot of this, but I do. And I encourage people on my team to play games during the day. So like when we're working on something, we'll like buy, we have a Steam account and we'll just buy a whole heap of games that are relevant um, to whatever genre we're looking at and we'll just play them together. Uh, board games. Uh, I don't know, do you guys play board games? Yeah, like seriously, board games are, like this is a new thing for me. In the past year, I've just played so many board games. Uh, Werewolves is something that we've been playing, like it's so much fun. Uh, Kill Dr. Lucky, a whole heap of really interesting board games. But go play them because actually, from a game mechanics perspective, they're very, very smart. And if you can build a board game, you can build a, a, a digital game as well. Um, Talk to people and collaborate. It's really important that you share your ideas and you get them out there and you bounce off other people. Like, you could have the best idea in the world or you could have an average idea which will be made better by sharing it with other people. It's really important for creative people who, I mean, a lot of creative people, like, they go, I have my idea. I'm not going to tell anybody. And it's like, okay, that's fine, but you have to. You have to share your idea and make it better and better and better because it really hones it. Particularly when you're thinking about who's going to play it. It's not just for you, right? It's for other people around you. So ask people that you think you're aiming your game at. Um, don't be afraid to take risks. So uh, a lot of people, like, they'll have some, like, I mean, I'm quite weird, I think. I watch a lot of horror movies and I spend a long time animating, you know, squirrels on fire, right? So I get a bit, you know, wacky sometimes. And I, for years I used to like have loads of really fun and interesting ideas but was afraid to say them because I was like, people are going to think I'm insane, I'm going to lose my job. And then I started talking about them when I became incubation director. So I was like, oh, okay, so this is okay. So Actually, it's a really positive thing to, to talk about. You're right. Whatever it is, share it. And if anybody judges you, then they are not as creative as you are. They're not understanding of what you're... You, nobody should judge other people's ideas. So I hope everybody here, when they hear an idea, they can kind of talk about it in a positive way, no matter what it is, because it's coming from somewhere within somebody. Um, the sixth thing are mind maps. These are really interesting. I don't know if you guys have seen these. So mind maps are a great way of kind of like... You know when you get creative clutter in your brain and there's just like a zillion things and you can't quite get focused on one thing? Um, and this happens to a lot of creative people. A mind map is a really, really great way of just kind of putting it down in paper and working out all the different paths and kind of sorting out your ideas. Um, so what I'll do... That this is Tony Buzan. And, I mean, not a lot... I don't know if people know about mind maps, but I thought I'd show this little video. Yeah. How to improve your creative thinking. Which I thought was good. It's only three minutes. Don't worry. Tony Bazan is a leading expert on the growth and learning and inventor of the revolutionary mind mapping technique. Through his work in the media, Tony aims to educate the world in how to use the brain more effectively. Tony believes that everyone has the potential to be creative. And in this film, he talks about how you can find and develop your inner creativity. Step one. It's true. First, I want to dispel the notion that anyone, anywhere, could be not creative. We have a million, million brain cells, and they all integrate. Now, anybody with a piece of equipment like that who says, I'm not creative, is obviously making a mistake. What has happened is that they haven't been taught how to use that phenomenal piece of equipment. Step two, the left and right brain. As we know, the left uses words and numbers and lists and logic and analysis, and the right brain deals with rhythm and color and shape and form and imagination and data. It has been thought that creativity was right brain. And because we've misanalyzed that, creativity has therefore been made to damage when it needs to use both sides and get the order and the number and the image and the colour and the rhythm and the 
the imagination and the daydreaming all working together. That is creativity. Okay. Set free. Speed of thought. Speed of thinking is called fluency. How fast, how rapidly can you generate ideas? And that you can develop by just playing at it. You can practice thinking faster. You can practice uh, you know, getting those little puzzles and working them out faster and faster speed and that kind of productivity is one of the hallmarks of creative genius. Step four, originality of thought. If someone says, what could you use a coat hanger for? And you answer, for hanging a coat. That will not get you high five points in creativity. If you said you could use it to fuel a rocket ship to the moon by taking the constituent molecules of that particular coat hanger and converting it into some kind of fuel, that's way out. That's what is known as thinking out of the box. Step five, flexibility of thought. Most people tend to focus on one way. This is the way I think. This is the way I see that. When it should be, how many ways can I see this from? How many perspectives can I look at it from? And the, the great creative thinkers play with looking at different perspectives. Step six, imagination and association. All great creative thinkers are using their imagination. What they are doing in addition to that is they're making links between things. So they are associating. So it's imagination and association the two big key words for creativity. And what you have to do when you are being creative is to find those associations and connections between things that are going to create something new. So um, what I like about showing that video, it's like he's obviously a really smart guy, so when he says it, people tend to believe him rather than believing me. So that's like the science behind creativity. Um, I'm going to have to rush this up, so oh, I'm going to get to show my next awesome video. So um, what is creativity? And creativity is when you ask, find a question, ask it, and you've got to solve that problem that you've presented with yourself. And I don't mean solving a problem like in, dear Claire, you know, I've had a bad day in work today, whatever. Um, so problem solving, um, everybody is faced with that every day. Everything that we do every day from like, should I get out of bed now or wait an extra five minutes? It starts as soon as we wake up. It probably you know, kicks off in the middle of the night. So it's something we do naturally every day. You just have to remember that it's you know, from a creative perspective, when you're thinking about a game idea, present yourself with that question. It's just another problem you have to solve and figure out. Um, and everyone has capacity to be creative. I work with amazing engineers and they like, you know, speak with big words and things that sometimes I don't understand, and yet they're just some of the most amazing people I've ever met and had the, the pleasure of working with. I was going to show you a video because I wanted to kind of uh, show you an example of um, a thing that I think is super creative, and it's an example, and it, it's like proof that anything, anything can be uh, creative. Um, and I'll kind of, I'll really quickly click in it and I'll play it. So this is the honey badger. Do you guys know the honey badger? He didn't give a shit, right? So the honey badger, this particular... So this particular animal, sorry, is, um, is able to... So he, the, this guy owns um, a honey badger in, uh, in Australia and they kind of kept him in a pen and he kept escaping. So every day this honey badger was faced with the problem of how do I escape today? And no matter what this guy did, this honey badger was able to utilize the tools around him and escape. So the first, when they put him in this pen, um, he kind of used the rake to lean it against the wall and climb out. This is a honey badger. This isn't even a human being, and he's just being super creative. Then they gave him a mate to keep him entertained. So he used her to climb on top of, to get up to a latch and a gate, unlatch the gate and escape. So they worked together to escape. And then they, they did something else and they sorted out the gate. And then he like made mud balls and built a pile of mud balls and used them to climb out. You cannot keep this thing in. And every day he, he's asked, asked himself the same problem. This is just weird. <laughs> like, right? Um, but look at it, even the fact that it can get into the fridge, it's like, yeah. And like, they can't do it because they're quite aggressive. So never approach a honey badger, but also know that it's a really good problem solver. So I kind of wanted to show 
that. What I'll really do is talk quickly about what we do as studios. I know we're about to go, but uh, I want to talk about jams. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys, so there's lots of things that you can do. I mean, we do it within the studios, but um, there's a lot of public places that you can go do jams in. And a game jam is just where you kind of uh, get resources or you, you get a group of people together and you just make whatever, whatever you want. Uh, we do it as a studio once a year. We do it at Lionhead, we do it at Soho, we do it at Lyft. Studios do it as a whole. This is some pictures from our creative days uh, where you can see some paper prototyping. We do put a time challenge on it. So our one this year was three days, but that, uh, you can do three to five days. I've also been to one that they did it in one day, which is so impressive. Um, it can be anyone any discipline, any size team. Uh, and you can make anything, and the point of the jams are to have loads and loads of fun. Um, there's loads of benefits. Uh, they're really inspirational. <laughs> this was, well, I think it was called Drinks Please over here. So this is a great example of a paper prototype. Instead of Papers Please, they did Drinks Please, and they had us all acting out the roles of us coming along and trying to get cocktails and stuff like that. It was actually really good fun. Um, you learn the value of rapid prototyping. Rapid prototyping, like I say, can be card games, can be paper prototypes, can be you know, physically playing a game or, or a, a technical version of the game. We also discover that constraints can help the process. So it's actually when you're just told, go make a game, that's really hard. But if you have something to focus on, so if you give like a top line word or something like, you know, I don't know, jam, right? Then everybody has to make a game around jam and, um, and it kind of helps um, focus the process. You get great cross-discipline partnerships. It's really good for morale because we all really enjoy it, especially when we've made sports games for like three years. So we're like, yeah, let's make something completely different. And it gives us a real insight into the studio talent and helps us find the awesome. Nearly there. Tips and tricks, work out your creative problems aloud, don't try and work them out in your head, say them. I kind of talked to myself in the car, I was doing it this morning and I looked like an aegis. Um, like, don't force it, I think it's like really important like, not to you know, sit at your desk and go, okay, have to have an idea, have to have an idea, have to have an idea. That's like the worst thing you could do, get up and walk away, go home. Usually your idea is going to come to you when you're on the toilet, when you're in the shower, when you're asleep in bed, that's why you keep your pen and paper with you. That's how ideas happen, when you're not expecting them to. And here's some books to read. Ta da! Creative books. And also, uh, Creativity Inc. is really interesting. Understanding comics is great for people who don't. Uh, as designers, we kind of have to share our ideas in a visual way. If you're a technical person or, or an engineer, then reading a book like this helps you visualize things or think like an artist as well. Um, and then there's some amazing TED Talks on creativity. Just go, uh, TED actually have like just a section of creative talks. Go look at them and be inspired. And finally, like the games industry, and I'm sure all of you here want to work in games eventually. Like, it's a really hard job. It's fun, but it's a really hard job. And I, I don't want to, anybody to go into games lightly and thinking that they can take the piss and, and just work nine to five. And it's like playing games all day, every day. It's a really hard job. Um, it's so satisfying and fulfilling, else I wouldn't be doing it as long as I have been. Um, so my first tip is be patient. You know, give yourself time. Don't rush into things. I think it's important to be patient with your ideas. Uh, work hard. You know, don't expect that it's going to be an easy ride. You will have to work hard, but it, the reward is worth it. Re research and reference, like, like Ollie was saying, like there's so many great ideas out there. You know, look at play games, read the books, um, kind of, and then your inspiration will come from those other things. And then use your imagination, and don't be afraid of the ideas that you have and the thoughts that you have. It's okay. Creative people have the crazy ideas. It's okay to share them. And that is it. And we're hiring. Ta -da! Read those. See if you fit those, and email this guy. Right. So sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs>